Elgato does it again. Sony Music for iOS. The brilliance of the Apple iPhone charger. And the trailer season continues on. It's Tuesday, May 22nd, 2012, and this is iWake. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Good morning, and welcome to another edition of iWeek. First of the day is a rather exciting product announcement from Elgato. Elgato makes all sorts of amazing things. They make a USB stick that speeds up video encoding on the Mac, and they are well known for their DVR solutions for the Mac. Their latest product offering is designed to capture games and works for both Mac and Windows. According to the Mac world, the $200 shiny black box is about the size of a portable USB hard drive and works on both OS X Lion and Windows 7 to capture footage from the iPad, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and other HDMI or component video-enabled devices. The software included with this product includes simple editing capabilities and lets you share directly to YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. It also exports the Apple TV, iPad, or iPhone, or you can send an email with the video attached. Additionally, in the Mac version, you can send your the footage basically to iMovie and if you're on Windows you can send it to Movie Maker as an MP4. Uh, there's also a handy flashback recording feature that basically buffers your recording so you can actually go back in time before you actually hit the record button and uh, that's a pretty cool thing indeed. The game capture HD from Elgato doesn't support high bandwidth digital copyright protect or content protection so you can't capture footage from say uh, Apple TV running a TV show or something like that or even Vimeo or Netflix on the Apple TV. That will not work. So uh, you have to be aware of what is H HDCP protected. So that's that. Uh, another cool feature of this box is it includes H.264 hardware encoding, just like their USB stick. It'll encode 40p, 576p, 720p, and 1080i resolutions. This box and hardware, or box and uh, software, is set to ship in early June. I'm super excited by this product and hope to have one when it comes out. I managed to capture some gameplay using AirPlay mirroring, but there are noticeable frame drops when I do that. Elgato makes solid products, and this seems to be another hit. As mentioned earlier, this is set to hit in June, which makes it a great birthday present uh, for me. If anyone listening wants to gift me something, my birthday is on June 5th. I will be 25 years old, so just a little tip there. Next up is the arrival of Sony's music streaming app for iOS. Music Unlimited is an iPhone app that provides some competition to Spotify and Audio. Uh, most notably, though, I think it's a Pandora competitor if you want to pay a couple bucks a month. According to The Verge, the Sony service comes in two different flavors, a $4 per month basic plan and a $10 per month premium one. Only the later plan lets you do basic stream for unlimited songs and uh, albums they're choosing. The basic plan lets you uh, basically stream a selection of channels like Pandora would, and you can dislike or like tracks based on your preferences. On the cheaper plan, you won't be able to listen to individual tracks for choosing unless you do kind of an iTunes match style thing on your Windows computer. Uh, there are no limits on song skips, and these are ad-free if you pay for the $4 a month plan. So a uh, nice offering from Sony, and uh, for 4 bucks a month, it should be a nice competitor to, to Pandora. While streaming music is awesome, you do need internet to do such things. So uh, one thing that's coming along is a rather big development in mobile data. According to the Cultimac, the five major cable companies in the United States are joining forces to deliver ubiquitous, ubiquitous Wi-Fi coverage for all of their subscribers for no additional charge. The service announced today, or yesterday I should say, is a joint offering by Bright House Networks, Cablevision, Comcast, Cox Communications, and Time Warner Cable. The companies will be turning on around 50,000 Wi-Fi hotspots across the country with roaming between these hotspots regardless of who provides this hotspot. If you're a customer of one of the five companies, will be able to roam freely across all of their access points. The new service is simply dubbed Cable Wi-Fi and will be rolled out to the major markets in the coming months. The rollout will be favoring markets that have two or more cable companies overlapping service. So this means initially it will be in New York metro area, Los Angeles, Tampa, Orlando, and Philadelphia. Users can access the service by joining the Cable Wi-Fi network using the same credentials they would if they were just accessing company-specific Wi-Fi spots for uh, their 
their subscribing company. So uh, there you go. If your company, if your customer of one of these companies, visit CableWiFi.com to get more information about this. Sounds like an amazing idea, and I hope it's actually good. Uh, basically, it needs to be easy to hop on these networks. Otherwise, I don't think it'll be picked up much. But a great idea that I hope uh, comes to fruition. And other news is a nifty little feature being added to Mountain Line, and it's automatic downloads of apps. According to 9 to 5 Mac, the latest update to OS X Mountain Line, uh, developer preview 3, seems to have enabled iOS style automatic app downloads in the App Store. Like on the iPhone and iPad, when you buy and install an app on one of or all of your Macs, your other Macs plugged into the same account ID will automatically install the app too. It's a pretty cool idea and gets me even more excited to see Mountain Line released. Last up in general tech news today is a teardown of the iPhone charger made by Apple. According to Ken Sheriff, dissembling Apple's uh, diminutive inch cube iPhone charger reveals a technology advanced flyback switch for uh, power supply that goes beyond the typical charger. It simply takes the AC input, anything between 100 and 240 volts, and produces 5 watts of smooth 5 volt power. But the circuit to do this is surprisingly complex and actually innovative. So even the charger here is brilliantly built. So you can find the teardown by following the link over on iWakePodcast.com. Last up today, I just want to mention that uh, there are a couple notable teaser trailers now up. The first is for Anchorman 2, the movie is set to release in 2013. And the teaser features the four main male characters. You can watch the trailer by visiting iWakePodcast.com or a link to it. The other notable teaser trailer is for the new James Bond movie, dubbed Skyfall. The movie is set to release in November of this year, and to my knowledge, this is the first teaser of this James Bond flick, and worth a watch. Once again, you can find the link over at iWakePodcast.com. Well, that's what's going on in the Apple world today. If you like the show, I hope you do. Please head on over to iTunes uh, to leave a review of the show, and uh, head on over to iWakePodcast.com slash again to support the show financially. Your support is badly needed for the show to continue on. And I apologize for today's show and its brevity and also uh, perhaps the background noise, which you may have heard. So um, there you go. Uh, finally, make sure to head over to youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N for the video version of the show. Join me tomorrow for another edition of iWeek. Aloha. Aloha.